Welcome to Dig Deep, the mining podcast. In this podcast, we go deep into mining news, hot topics, and live interviews with mining professionals and leading figures in the mining industry. Introducing your host, Rob Tyson, founder and director of Mining International and Mining International Executive, a leading global mining recruitment and headhunting agency. Hi, mining community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the mining podcast. And today's guest is Shagan Lawson, who's the CEO of Thor Exploration, uh, a West African-focused gold producer listed both in the TSX uh, Venture Exchange and the AIM. Um, with the company's flagship project uh, is their gold producing Segi Lola gold project in Nigeria, uh, with two other projects in Senegal and uh, Burkina Faso. Um, Shagan is a geologist by background and has worked in the corporate finance um, field before taking the helm at Thor uh, just over 12 years ago. Um, it's going to talk us uh, through uh, Thor Exploration's journey, um, what they've achieved and what the outlook of the, the company is. Um, it's also going to be attending Europe's largest mining event, which is resourcing tomorrow, uh, formerly known as the Mines and Money London, uh, which is taking place in London on the 28th to 30th of November. Um, it's a great platform uh, to look at the entire mining value chain, uh, fostering learning, there's lively debates, um, and providing valuable uh, networking opportunities so i encourage you to to go and get your tickets now all the details are below if you're watching on the youtube channel or if you're looking uh, listen to this on the podcast it will be in the show notes so um if you are going to uh, go and get your tickets now there is a discount code if you put deep deep 10 so all that information is below so go and get your uh, tickets so let's welcome uh, shaking to the podcast how you doing Shagan? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Yeah, and I appreciate your time as well. I know you've been uh, pretty busy uh, recently. Um, so as we always start these podcasts off, I just wondered if you can uh, tell us a little bit about, about yourself, about your, your career, uh, for those that, and I imagine quite a few people that listen to this podcast will know know you or know of you. Uh, but for those that don't, I just wonder if you can just give us an, uh, uh, an overview of your background. Thank you. Well, um like you said, I, I'm i CEO of Thor Explorations. Uh, it's a company which I actually started a long time ago, back in uh, February 2010, and it's been through various evolutions. Uh, initially, it's a private company. Um, started off with our first project, which was actually a completely grassroots project in Senegal, which is now known as the Duta Project. We um, ended up drilling that to discovery and then to where it is today. Um, and then in... In August 2011, we did a reverse takeover of what is now Thor Explorations Limited, um, which was a cash shell at the time. And that was when we went public. So we, at that point in time, we had our project in Senegal and we had pegged some ground in Burkina Faso. Um, the next evolution of Thor obviously came when we acquired the Segalola project in Nigeria, which was August 2016, uh, five years later. And that was really transformational for, for the company because that took us from, you know, a grassroots exploration project um, to actually resources that had been that had been drilled out. At the time, it was uh, much smaller than what it is now. And we took the Segalola project, you know, through various stages of development. So from a resource to a we drilled it some more, increased the size of the resource, took it to a preliminary feasibility study in October 2017. We completed a bankable feasibility study in February 2019. Um, we managed to get that through financial close, which is a very difficult process in December 2019. And we broke ground to build, you know, the first our first gold mine in March 2020, which coincidentally was the first large scale gold mine in Nigeria. Um, needless to say, um, we had the COVID pandemic, so all Nigerian airspace was closed on the 19th of March, 2020. However, we were very fortunate that we had a very, um, uh, should I say, committed EPC contractor, and we managed to build the plant through COVID and poured our first gold in July 2021. So that was another transformational period for us, and we started commercially producing at the beginning of 2022. 
So our first full calendar year of gold production was 2022. We produced about 98,000 ounces, completely transformational for the company, obviously starting to generate cash flow compared to when we were, you know, even just three, four years ago before that, where we, you know, raising small pockets of money, $2 million, $3 million here and there to move the company along. Um, and now we are coming to the end of our second year of production. It's been a more difficult year. Obviously, we've been mining from a, an area which has had a higher strip ratio and lower grade. But, you know, we're very excited about, you know, where we've positioned the company because we're now going into a high grade area for the next couple of years um, and positioned to generate very strong cash flow. And as a first mover in Nigeria, we've now positioned ourselves picking up a lot more exploration ground, not just in gold, but also in lithium. And we have obviously additional avenues of growth in Senegal, where we're looking to hopefully build our, our second mine in the company in, in the next couple of years. And um, obviously you mentioned that you started the, or you started with the company or started the company back 12, 13 years ago. Did you envisage um, that the, the journey that you've taken and obviously pouring first gold? Obviously that was probably your vision and there's obviously a number of different steps that you had to, had to get through. Um, looking back, it must be monumental for you to to go through that journey to where you are today in pouring first gold. Um, and it's obviously must be a, a great achievement for you. I mean, the the strategy of the company changed several times. You know, I um, initially started the company as a consulting company for Nigerian uh, junior mining companies who had mining licenses but didn't have the financial or technical expertise to develop them um, because I came from a background of corporate finance where we were financing junior mining companies such as like, you know, what Thor would have been prior to production. I always, I studied geology at university, always knew there was great geology in Nigeria, always knew historically prior to oil and gas, Nigeria was a champion in the mining space, but always wondered why there were no mines in Nigeria, really because of the neglect of the sector, because of the prevalence of oil and gas. So that was the initial business model, um, just go as a consultant. But when I got there, you know, and I started, you know, a few months in, it just became apparent, you know, it was pretty much the same energy and level of difficulty <laughs> consulting for someone, because if you were passionate about it and you were treating a project as your own, it was the same energy required to do that for another company as to do it for yourself. So that's when I started looking at pegging ground and then casting my, my net wider in West Africa, not just Nigeria. And that took me on a journey looking in different countries, Sierra Leone, Senegal, obviously, Burkina, Mali, Ghana. Um, but what I can say is, did I, did I envisage this? Uh, when when we, I decided to go down the route of hopefully becoming a, a mining company, yes, I, I can say I envisaged it. I did not think it would take this long. I did not think it would be nearly this painful um but look we are where we are today and we're very happy to have been through the experience because you know we picked up so many learning experiences along the way mm, no and congratulations um what is uh thor's explorations uh, strategic vision for the future uh in terms of obviously balances its large-scale uh, gold production efforts uh with its growing interest in lithium exploration activities um, and how does the company plan to navigate and prioritize these opportunities? Okay, so gold is the, the core of the business. It's the long-term vision of the company. We want to extend the mine life. We have a pipeline of gold projects. We continue to look in West Africa. And if there's anything compelling in other parts of Africa where we think we have an advantage in knowing how to operate, uh, we continue to prioritize that. So that is the core of the business. Um and, you know, we hope to build, not just be a single mine company for even the, the medium term, we hope to be a multi-mine company in the next, you know, five years. So that's our aspiration. You take that hat off and then you put on another hat. We are a first mover in Nigeria, and that comes with um, considerable um, strategic advantage. You know, we, we've spent the last six, seven years in Nigeria, building up knowledge, building up expertise, building relationships, building up uh, human resource capacity, building up um, inventory and uh, and um, hard infrastructure. When I say that, I mean you know 
even things like ability to do surveys of our own ground um, with uh, high tech drones, drill rigs, ability to have uh, to move earth with excavators and things like that. That's come with considerable uh, ability, sorry, to, to assay our own um, samples as well. We have our own lab. So that's that brings considerable first mover advantage. And what that has meant is, you know, if there have been any compelling um, opportunities that can add significant value to our shareholders, we've looked at very closely. And that's what the whole lithium venture was born, born from. You know, we know that, you know, commercially, uh, the supply demand gap for lithium over the next five to 10 years, we know the perspectivity of lithium in Nigeria, and we think we're very well positioned to capitalize on, on it. Now, that doesn't take us away or distract us from our core business, which is gold. We have the ability to add on um, uh, value to, for our existing shareholders by funding the initial exploration programs and then coming to a position where we decide where to go with us. So it gives us excellent optionality and it gives our shareholders um, exposure to this optionality as well. Um, why don't we just elaborate on uh, the company's commitment to uh, the environmental sustainability um, and what specific measures or practices does the company employ to minimize its environmental impact uh, in its operations? Yeah, um, we've prioritized uh, the ESG from prior to mining. So, you know, we've even before we got into construction, we've been carrying out environmental baseline monitoring uh, for years. So understanding um, where the comp how the company has been positioned and understanding our environment prior to, to going in and, and basically monitoring that through the operation and committing to uh, rehabilitating um, the mining license as well. Um, and then we also do this, uh, implement practices on an ongoing basis uh, where we can reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and we're committed to that. We're committed to monitoring that as well. Um, I'll give you a, a very good example is we, all our, our operations apart from our trucks are powered by compressed natural gas, which is sourced from Nigeria and source using a virtual pipeline delivering compressed natural gas to the to the um to the mining operation the the carbon impact of that is huge um and we continue to do that we we commit to um not e even when we when we um designed the the mine itself a lot of it was looking at the flora and fauna um looking at what could be saved even though the mine footprint required um, 700, eight, um, 700 acres, we managed to squeeze that into 440. Um, so where we can, we've always uh, prioritized our, our environmental and social imp impact on the, on the area where we work. Uh, in terms of community engagement and social responsibility, what initiatives or projects has Thor Explorations been involved in um, that's obviously benefited the local community and uh, and within its mining operations. Um, and also, how does the company prioritise and support social development in the surrounding areas? Yeah, look, even before I answer the question, I have to say that, you know, it, it would be impossible to develop a mine in, in these areas without having the community on your side. And We've noted that right from exploration. You, you think how visual even exploration is, drilling 24 hours a day, pulling up bits of core from the earth. Um, so we've always had to make sure we've had the social license to operate in Nigeria. Um, so from exploration, we found that being transparent and educating the three communities within our exploration licenses um, on how long the process would be managing their expectations was the most important thing. And what we did was we signed community development agreements with each of our communities, giving them visibility on the progress, letting them know at the exploration phase, we our budget would be completely different from the construction phase. And during the construction phase, our budget would be completely different from when we're producing gold. And even when we are producing gold, we do have obligations and commitments to repay loans and so on. So that was the first part. 
But managing to educate um, our communities transparently has meant that we've been able to uh, implement projects and, you know, in response, having the co community uh, cooperate with us um, to ensure that these projects can be implemented smoothly. Now, some of the projects I, 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 I can talk about uh, we're very proud of, um, and they range from scholarships for the children, um, significant amounts of employment um, for the community members, 26% of our labor forces from the local communities, not just employing them, upskilling them. So not just having them as, as casual labor, upskilling them in the, in the labs, um, as technicians, as truck drivers. Um, we've uh, got, had other projects such as road buildings that may seem sometimes um, surplus to requirement, but we understand the, the, um, the benefit of having this employment and these um, these community projects, and then uh, most recently, uh, a project which is we're, we're extremely proud of is the cooperatives um, that we do with with the community. Uh, two examples of these: one is a, a market garden, where we have uh, dedicated an area to produce uh, vegetables, specific vegetables, um, um, uh, with with highly trained um, agricultural uh, farmers that do pass on these skills onto the community. It's a cooperative, so we actually, we buy the, the product from them and they also sell into the local market. They keep the proceeds and the vision is over the next 12 to 18 months, we hand over the project completely to them to manage. Uh, we've done the same uh, uh, the same structure with, with a fish farm, with uh, different types of fish. We buy a lot of the product and then they sell those into um into the local market as well so they're benefiting financially they're benefiting socially um the, their skills are, are being increased as well talking about skills um i wonder if you can just tell us a little bit about the mining industry within nigeria obviously you mentioned oil and gas is i suppose uh, the prominent uh predominant industry um how is the the skills within mining within nigeria um and i suppose also the mining legislation being obviously at the forefront of the mining industry and, and what four have done um just wonder if you can just just uh summarize and just uh discuss uh yeah. those those points yeah sure look we we've seen a much higher activity in terms of of mining in nigeria over the last six years since we've been there and obviously the success of building a gold mine there and demonstrating to the world that it can be done in Nigeria has meant there's been a lot more interest in, in the country. So we've seen an influx of companies. We've seen local oil and gas companies diversify into early stage exploration. We've seen some listed companies even from London and Toronto come into Nigeria. Uh, with the lithium boom, we've seen a big influx of you know sizable Chinese companies coming into Nigeria as well and committing to uh, invest significant capital um, into the mining space. Um, in terms of the expertise in the country, um, we we have seen on the non-technical side, very, very high levels of, of expertise. So for example, our in-house lawyers, our accountants, our finance department, our environmental and social departments taking transferable skills from the oil and gas sector, they're extremely skilled. Where we have seen a slight um, lag is on the technical side. So for example, our mining engineers, our processing managers, and so on. And we've we've managed to fill all these positions with West Africans from Ghana, from Mali, from Senegal. We do have a plan in place to um, transition and do a knowledge transfer to Nigerians over the next 24 months um, there as well. Um, in terms of the Mining Act, it's one of the more enabling mining acts in, in Africa. I think it has been designed to make the country benefit, but also to attract investors into the country. So there are a lot of incentives in place, such as 100% ownership of your projects. Um, there isn't a government free carry, for example. The government benefits through the employment, through the royalties. Um, there's a tax holiday for the first five years of production. You have customs and duty waivers on the import of your mining specialist equipment and so on. So it's uh, it's designed to, to um, kickstart the sector um, I've certainly uh, seen a, a massive pickup in the number of players in the sector, and um, and yeah, look, we we think it's it's continuing to go in that direction.
Um, could you share some of the, the uh, insights, the general uh, mineral ex uh, extraction methods and techniques that uh, Thor Exploration utilises in its operations? Um, and also, are there any unique or in innovative approaches that the company employs um, that you're willing to discuss with us? Um, look, we, we run a conventional CIL process. We're very fortunate that the metallurgy of our deposit is very, very easy. We have recoveries from 92 to 96%. Um, on In certain areas of the mine, we have um, we have recoveries by uh, up to 70% by gravity alone. So we're extremely fortunate. We don't do anything uh, overly specialized or unique um, with, with, with our extraction process. Um, I've got two more questions. Um, what would you say or how how do you see the outlook of mining within Nigeria over the next sort of next five to ten years? Obviously, you mentioned some of these bigger players coming into the industry and other companies. Um, and obviously not just looking at gold, looking at lithium. How how do you see it, uh, the mining industry playing out in Nigeria over that period of time? I think uh if you look at the size of the country and where it is geographically and the age of the rocks there, I think there's enormous potential for mining in Nigeria. Um, the, the Mining Act is enabling. Um, the legal environment is very compelling. It's politically stable. So these are all the inputs that you need to, to develop a successful mining sector. We've had one, should I say, quote unquote, success story in Thor managing to build a gold mine. Um, I think what is lacking um, so far is the amount of exploration data that's required to, to get the real big players coming in. Um, very, very um, encouragingly enough, we've seen the government supported by um, quasi government institutions such as the Africa Finance Corporation committing um, funding to to kickstart exploration, to generate that data. And I think if that's done successfully, um, it will continue to attract more players to the sector, which will eventually lead to a, a successful mining industry in Nigeria. And lastly, uh, what's the outlook for the company sort of over the next sort of six to 12 months? Um, and if it, I wonder if there's anything else that you would like to add uh, to uh, add to any of the content that you've uh, provided so far? Yeah, look, the, the the company is is we're now a producer. We've we've transitioned. You know, we over the next six to twelve months, we're uh, uh, first and foremost we're looking to generate very strong free cash flow. Um, so that's the first point. Secondly, um, our growth organically is very well positioned. Uh, we're our top priority in terms of uh, mining is the extension of the mine life through exploration, and we continue to to carry on exploration. We have a second project in our pipeline in a different jurisdiction. So we diversify our, our risk as well. Um, in Senegal, the Duta project, which is now sitting just under 2 million ounces. We're looking to hopefully complete that preliminary feasibility study and get that into production over the next 24 months. Uh, oh, sorry, get that into construction over the next 24 months. Um, and lastly, um, like I said at the beginning of the call, we're very well positioned um, as a first mover uh, and we have great optionality, um, not just um, with gold, but, you know, we've now looked into lithium and anything else that might might come up as well. So we think the next six to 12 months are pretty exciting for the company and it's all underpinned by um, gold production at the Segalolo project, which should be generating strong cash flow. Yeah. Shigan, really appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your journey. It's been a, a success. Um, like you said, many challenges that you face and and you've overcome um, to get to obviously into production. So um, really congratulate you on that. If our audience wants to reach out to you, if they want to follow uh, your story um, and the journey of the company, how can they go about doing that? What sort of social media platform channels are you on also? We're on all of them, I think. Um, obviously, you can start with our website, get all our information there with our press releases. We're on LinkedIn is where probably we're most active, uh, Twitter as well. Yeah. And then we have yeah. a, an, an, a, 
for any inquiries, we have an email address on our website, influenceforexpl.com, where we respond very quickly. Yeah, we'll include those all in the, the show notes as well. So people got easy access to uh, to uh, see see your journey and continue the success that you've achieved so far. So really appreciate your time. Perhaps you want to come on to the podcast sometime later next year and uh, give us an update. I would love to. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, as she has, uh, has just told us, he's he's um faced many challenges but um overcome all of them to to um produce a uh a, a gold company that is actually put that is actually pouring making gold so um it's a great great story appreciate you uh listening to the episode can you and uh, also appreciate your continued um uh, continued support of the uh, podcast keep uh passing this uh episode on to keep sharing the episode on to uh and the podcast onto others within our mining industry, but also people outside of our mining industry. So, uh, um, so everyone can learn from the success that obviously Shagin has just, uh, that has just explained to us. So really appreciate your support. And until next time, happy mining. Thank you for listening. Remember to reach out to Rob via the show notes and be sure to subscribe and leave a review until next time. Happy mining, helping each other to improve the mining industry.